We're moving into week four, which means we're going to recap week three here, the week that was on Teach Tapes. And joining me, as he does every week, is former FBS special teams coach Steve Hauser. Steve, back for another week of it. Yeah, Keith, always good. These games keep on your toes now. I mean, whether it's end of game stuff, whether it's teams that are supposed to be, you know, kind of gearing up for conference play and you're down to the wire and you got to figure it out. So it's always you learn something. You know, in our intro every week, I say, you know, we're going to we're gonna cover everything here. Offense, defense, special teams. We always start with special teams. I mean, that's been, you know, your niche. And we've just not gotten around to a lot of the other stuff. We've hit on it here and there. So our focus is going to shift a little bit today. But before we do that, in the week that was, we have one of the things we talked about came up again. Yeah, it was kind of a, a one-off there on, you know, talking about a lot of punt returner fundamentals and, and making good decisions. But the punt coverage of impact in that returner, we, we talked about it briefly of long stride in that jammer into the returner. And that happened in the Arkansas State, Ohio State game at the end. And it actually hit a bouncing ball. But this week it happened three different times. I mean, I'm, I'm looking through my notes here and you got South Carolina against Georgia and a couple other instances where it, it was really clear. Nebraska OU, they had OU had that guy dropping out, trying for a max holdup. And at the end of the game, Purdue got one against Syracuse. So, you know, it's funny. We talked about the, the position players having to fill in with the specialists. It's just you speak into existence. I pulled up a quote. I, I remember Jim Trestle talking about this. At a, at a clinic, and I, I believe this is from like Peter Drucker, it's a business quote, and it's, what gets measured gets managed. The idea that what you focus on is something that your team is going to work towards, not just managing, but making sure that those things happen, that they create those opportunities. And one I see a, again and again, and I see some teams that are just hyper-focused on it. I've seen coaches talk about it in their clinics, and it shows up on their game tape. And I see other teams that probably do circuits for it and talk about it, but really don't make those little details something that everybody sees, right? And I see it quite a bit, you know, watching some Friday night games, but I've seen it at the college level too. And it's the idea of ball security and turnovers, right? Both of those things, working both sides of it. And I think you hear those programs that talk about, you know, being about the ball. You know, whether that's been an old famous Pete Carroll talk where he he has the ball right up in front and and talking about the ball is everything to, you know, I think it was Greg Williams put the ball on a spring. I remember a coach asking me if if I knew where where you could get one of those after he saw him doing it. But it's it's one thing saying it. It's another to teach it and actually make all those things a part of your culture by instilling the behaviors that are either going to create ball security all the time or create the takeaways. Yeah, and it's, it's great to see and, and really been able to focus on it a lot through teach tapes. We, you know, teach security is a hashtag. The other one is teach takeaways. Whether it is that five to six minutes of offense and defensive circuits or even guys in positional work. You know, you see a lot of things with the Colts. You also see a lot of things with the Browns in their receiver drills with Chad O'Shea going through things with Amari Cooper and Peoples Jones. Like all these guys, they're doing different things within their individual work even outside, man, if, if, it, if the ball's in your hands, you're the most important guy in the organization. It's Again, it has to become part of the culture. So it's more than, well, we covered it. We did the circuit with it today, and we moved on. I mean, it has to be something that is being coached up all the time, and not just by you, the coach. It's really going to become powerful when your players see it. When they see those opportunities, they see somebody miss it in practice or in a game, and they're coaching it up as well. I think just breaking it down in the lens that I grew up with, with with offense before I went into special teams, number one, like wrist above elbow. You know, I remember John Wozniak came in for his interview at, at Oklahoma State and did a 15-minute ball security presentation, and, and that was the number one coaching point, right? The other thing I've heard is, you know, squeeze it. And, and that came from when Tom Manning was with the Colts, and that's the thing that Frank Wright was saying all the time. You can say all these other things like eagle claw, big like coaching points, but – the end of the day, squeeze the dang ball, get it on your chest. You know, Joe Judge had a great rep um, that I saw with Saquon of front tip, right, fingers across the top, butt of that ball is in your arm, right, with the crease in your bicep and rolling that thing over to your far pecs. So now you got a backboard, right? So now understanding of, hey, in the open field, number one, those points to contact, but also then what? 
right? In and out of the cut, how is that ball carriage maintained? Is it flailing out, going opposite? Broncos under Nathaniel Hackett are doing a drill where they drop in and they get a ball tossed to them and they've got to do basically a mirror drill where they're making cuts and making sure that that ball's not changing, whether the front tip comes down or that back end comes open. You know, Sirianni's big thing is elbow lock, right? When you're going down and you're trying to stay up, right, that stumble bumble, they'll talk about rolling over the far peck, but also locking in that back elbow to your rib cage so there's not that punch out on the back end. So some couple different things of even just an open grass. The other thing I had as a note was body ball boundary. It's a thing that Tom Manning would always talk about of, man, you get that pursuit from the inside. And there's a great clip I saw of Sirianni talking it through of like, man, where can you protect with your offhand? It's on the guy that's coming for pursuit later on at an over the top angle. And God forbid something does happen. That ball is still going towards the sideline, which offensively would be a huge friend for you. With all those things, as you talk through them, it's looking for where do these situations occur or how do they occur that on the ball security side make that ball carrier vulnerable to losing the football, right? It is the guy who's stumbling, right, and trying to keep his balance. It, it's, you know, the guy who's throwing a stiff arm but not cognizant of what's coming up behind that. Those are situations where the focus becomes something else a little bit more than just the ball, that those things start to get lax and fall apart, and now the defense has that opportunity. And, and you could bet on the other side they're looking for those exact things. A hundred percent. And you know, everything you hear from the, the defensive side is going to be second man in, right? Again, the, the ball carrier, he's trying to destroy that would be tackler with the stiff arm or the spin move or throwing that guy by. Well, everything about him, that primary focus isn't about the ball. Now it's about staying up. Well, that's where you're getting a lot of activity. And, you know, I talk about Chad O'Shea with the receivers. He's got those guys going through the ladder. He's having them stiff arm the medicine ball. And then his assistant's got the boxing gloves or the pencil arms, and they're attacking the actual ball while that ball carry is working the fundamentals of the stiff arm. So you've got a lot of processes firing for that player, and you've got to feel it from both sides. You know, the other side is out of the spin move. Eddie Faulkner with the Steelers does an incredible job with the running backs. you got some clips of Najee Harris going through and literally rolling with his back off of a medicine ball, like a plyo ball, and then coming back and making sure that carriage is tight as he stays up. Man, the other thing, they've got this big little like heavy bag that looks like um, when the you know, Game of Thrones, they're trying to like break down the door, those logs, but it's just a bag, a cushion, and he's hitting those guys with it and making sure that they have that clasp hand, right? Instead of the old in, in trouble double where you're putting two hands over it, well, literally just locking that in like a necklace clasp, right? And making sure that that ball stays high and tight, you know, the, the chin it philosophy, but also you have that arm bar over the top with your off hand. So that ball's not coming wide, flailing out of the spin move. Great, great coaching points there. A lot of different drills that you can work these in and the situations. And I, I like what you talked about there with, with Coach Faulkner and, you know, creating, simulating uh, the, the spin move, right? And, and how you do those different things. Like that's where in drills, right? You, you want to, these guys to get the rep and the feel for when these things happen too. So it's not just talking through and showing them on film. Here's where some of these things happen. It's creating the behaviors behind it, right? They need to feel what that technique is. In, in just one other situation there, Keith, and you know, I was kind of watching these clips before we got on the phone. You know, Jamal Singleton, who I, I had the chance to work with at Oklahoma State, he's now with the Eagles. And they're going through and he's got that clicker, you know, with the, the rope attached to the ball and he's pulling it down while these guys are falling on a hand shield, right? When you're falling forward, man, you better rip that thing and hold it tight because when someone's trying to peel back, right, rip the front tip of that ball out, that's where you got to even squeeze harder, right? You're falling forward, man, make sure that ball security is a premium so don't call the fumble with the ground. Now, the other side of it, Tyrone Wheatley, who had all sorts of success as a running back, he's with the Broncos now. He's got the back tip of that football in kind of a, a, um, a brace there, and it's on the, the sleds like these guys are running during the offseason. So when that slack hits, it gets pulled back just like a defensive lineman's trying to rip that ball out from the back end, and it makes him squeeze it and pull it up and, and chin the ball. So all these different verbal cues, whether it's you as the coach or with some equipment to simulate, hey, they're coming from behind you, Make sure we have this thing when we go to the next down. What's important 
for this is that it's it's just not the the circuits that you might do or the individual drills that now once you start instilling these are the situations that as a coach you're you're looking for those within group periods within team periods within whatever might be one-on-ones or matchups whatever you have that guys are following through on doing those things there and again I think what you start to see in anything that you you do start to put that in awareness. As I said, you do start to to measure it, right? It's it's going to become managed not just by you but everybody else, that they're going to see those things and coach each other up as well. As I said, then it becomes part of, truly becomes part of your culture. Now, flipping that to the other side, the defense is also working against that. They're looking for the opportunities to create fumbles, to recover fumbles, and a lot of great things that you've put together uh, on teach takeaways as well just like we got caught up on the special teams Keith before we leave that teach security aspect it's not just the ball handlers right it's the old line right there's guys doing drills in those circuits that man that ball gets swatted up and obviously they can't catch it and advance it the numbers and all that just swatting it down make sure that ball's not getting up there and that's a potential takeaway on the D line and the quarterback gets stripped because he's stepping up in the pocket and falling on that, getting in the feeble position and getting your knees up and building that thing right into your gut. I mean, there was a rep this week in college football. Uh, there was a strip sack and a running back came diving back from the protection. He literally belly flopped on the ball. It skirted out further down the field and the defense scooped and scored it. I mean, there's actually the Dallas Cowboys with Mike McCarthy training. And this is a little bit to the nth degree now of teaching some of these offensive guys a little bit of teaching the takeaways If there is, for some reason, a turnover, hey, how do we go through and punch out the back or rip it and try to get that ball back? And also, you know, build into the teach takeaways here. They got Micah Parsons doing ball security drills. I mean, he scoops and scores that thing. He makes a pick. How do we make sure we finish through the dang goal line high and tight with that wrist above elbow? So I I just wanted to make sure I got that in on you, Keith. But the teach takeaways, I mean, the number one thing I'm seeing in the actual clips and this is just football, I mean, is getting a body part on that ball violently, right? Helmet on the ball, bite the ball, second man in with a big shoulder collision. Like, I don't know how many times you can rep that in practice, but that's the actual part of that coaching point showing up in the game, right? We can do as much, you know, peanut punch and, you know, whether it's from the front end, saw a drill with John Gruden going through a line. They got the ball in the little wraps right there. And they're just literally going down and punching the ball out four or five times in a row. You've also got situationally along the sidelines, destroying that stiff arm and taking that far hand and punching the ball through. Use the sideline as your vice and take more of an aggressive pass to the ball. So I think there is two different ways to think of that punch out from the front, but more so if it's pursuit, punching that thing out from the back, Or even over the top, I saw a clip from Jacksonville with Joe Cullen talking about if you're pursuing from the backside, go through that near hip. One way or the other, whether you're coming up through the back door or down over the top, you're pursuing that backside, finish down through the near hip. So I think it's it's interesting from how are you creating it with violence on the football with the tackle, right? And just that surge of energy punching the ball out, or also are we targeted punching through and and there's a lot more reps of guys being well-schooled up in that in the college game. Just as we said on the offensive side of the ball, it's look for the situations, create those situations, replicate them over and over. And I know one that's become popular is called the circle chase. Yeah, and, and that's definitely a drill that started with, with Coach Belichick and, and his side of the tree. I mean, going through and having an offense and defense competitive drill of you're starting down that far side of the hoop. They catch a ball coming in from the quarterback on that downhill shoulder tuck it, pin it, and now that el- backside elbow lock, right? You got your wrist above elbow, your chin in the ball, you're squeezing it, whatever your you know team's coaching points are, but they're getting that immediate trail of the defender in his back pocket, trying that hard front tip rip from the backside or punching out that extension. Because again, what we said is guys are coming through angles and that ball's flailing out as they try to get back up field and there's that back door. But on the depth, you still have that second level safety coming down and closing out from that 15 to 20 yard range, not only are you protecting the ball on offense, you got to get north and win between that small area, right? The sidelines to the numbers, that red line tackling um, and going long stride to short stride. Because what that bleeds into, Keith, is is one of the drills that I was surprised at. I I didn't 
think of this until I saw it, and then I see it happen more and more in the game reps, is the 49ers D-line coach, one of his stations in their takeaway stations is literally just a ball rolling on the ground towards the sidelines and another player saving it from going out of bounds and the other one working the scoop and score. And we can get into all the dynamics of four balls over the ball, you know, and the escort blocks leading your team down there. But just making sure that ball doesn't roll out of bounds because then that's another play for the offense, right? How many times have you seen that run, run, reach in the strip sack or even just the ball in the perimeter and that thing's rolling and everybody's eyeballs are like, oh my God, the ball's just on the ground and everyone's converging on it. How do we make sure as a, de- as a defense, we don't lose an opportunity by that ball going out of bounds? So just situations that come up off the tape and building it into the drill. Steve, that was a quick one this week, but we did focus on both sides of the ball as we said we were going to. And really, uh, all of this is, is framed out. You sent a picture this week of, of Brandon Staley in front of his team with a, a screen that said the blueprint. And on it, he has things that we're going to talk about. We've already hit quite a bit on situational masters, right? That's an important thing. Today, we focused on the takeaway margin, both keeping the ball and taking it away. In the future, we'll talk about explosives and penalties and really using that as a framework on how we're going to go through the season and really highlight some things that you can work on right now in season to make your team better at, whether you know, you're getting ready for a rivalry game or a run into the playoffs. All these things are going to be important because as the uh, competition level increases, you get deeper into a season, the margin becomes slimmer and slimmer for air, and these are the opportunities that are going to create some wins. And Keith, you, you brought up the word culture earlier, and obviously there's books and podcasts and you know studies that you could go on for days about that word, but how do you make it your culture on video? How does it show up? Like, I think these are structures that you can keep coming back to. Like, If we're going to do things the right way and be about our business, how are we taking care of the football? Like, are we diligent in our preparation for our situations? Are we playing legal, right? Are we doing the things that are going to manage the game the right way, whether positively with explosives or, or hampering the opponent? So I think just this blueprint that, that Coach Staley talked about made sense to me of, hey, whether it's your drills, whether it's your, you're referring back to the football film of what you should be doing and just segmenting it out the right way to, to refresh that for your team as you start to get in the trudge of these, you know, continuous game weeks. And every week we give you a Teach Tapes clip of the week. This week we've already mentioned quite a few of those, and we're going to put those together so you will be able to see all of those clips that we mentioned uh, from Jason Garrett, Joe Judge, uh, Eddie Faulkner, guys talking about the Eagle Claw. We'll hit all of those for you this week as we wrap up uh, another great week of football and get ready for the next one here starting on Thursday night here in Cleveland with the Steelers and the Browns. Well, if there's one thing I've learned, Keith, that the Browns games are always going to be interesting. So let's just leave it at that. Yeah, exactly. Well, Steve, I appreciate the time you took in putting this together again and look forward to another week of Teach Tapes. Awesome. Thanks, Keith.